Good morning and welcome to worship with us here at Christ United Church. No matter what stage in your faith journey you are in, no matter where you come from, whether you are dressed in pajamas this morning as you watch together with us or whether you are in your Sunday finest, all are welcome here and we are grateful that you are worshiping with us today. A few announcements that we want to lift up. Today is the last day for ordering Easter flowers. If you would like to have flowers um, up front for the Easter service, and if you would like to have those flowers for your homes after the service is concluded, please, please, please get those order forms in today so that we can have those orders taken care of promptly. The Church Constitution Review Committee is, or the Church Constitution, the first review session is happening today at 1 p.m. We are undergoing revisions to the Constitution, and we are looking for your input. We have uh, sent out copies of the, the current draft that is up for revision, and this will be an informational session to go over some of those changes and to add your input to that. And your thoughts, your additions are incredibly appreciated. Also, we are looking for videos through the evangelism team. We are hoping to put together a welcome video for our church website as it will be undergoing a free update from our service provider. And as part of that, I am looking for videos that we can that we may have taken at church events and functions over the recent years. If you have any videos or photos uh, as well, and you would like to contribute those so that they can be edited together into this welcome video, I would appreciate it particularly. Lastly, there are uh, this is our season for the one great hour of sharing. We are appreciative of all of the coins that you have been gathering over this season and the opportunity to bring those in for Easter. There are still a couple weeks left to, to complete that if you're still searching through couch cushions or anything else. And, uh, or if you want to contribute more directly through a check or through other donations that can be brought to the church, we thank you so much for participating in that and the denominational ministries that it supports in this time and this season. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We continue our Lenten season of recovery as we focus on health as essential to our spiritual lives. The demands of following Jesus are great. He shows us that sometimes we must make extraordinary efforts to move in a new direction. As we consider the health of humanity, we cannot ignore the need to heal the very planet that sustains us. We live in increasing chaos of a beleaguered environment and the hoarding of resources. We want to be saved by something or someone else, but we discover this week that we are in the boat with the one who shows us our power to turn it around and to calm the storm. We protect this jewel that is our home, restoring something beautiful from the scars of the past.
Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, renew our holy vessels, especially this holy container of life on which we live, this very planet. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the beginning you created this universe with a phrase, let it be. And the waters and dry land, the sky and the creatures were formed. You set humanity among these wonders and invited us to care and honor all things. We have not successfully answered that call, seeing the abundance as a feast that would never end. We gorged ourselves, taking more than we could replenish at a rate that could not be sustained. We are beginning to comprehend the magnitude, beginning to see that things cannot just keep going as usual and not have dire consequences. We are frightened, which is partly why we are slow to accept it. But we now are witnesses to the forces of a world more broken that when, than when we inherited it. Water, wind, wave, fire, drought, earthquake, that signal it is time to pay attention to make real change. Too often we think there is nothing we can do, that the change required is too great. It all feels overwhelming, and so we look away, sometimes even from the small things that could make a difference for our community. Heal us. Show us our ability to chart a different course. Forgive our inaction. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Once again, I invite you to imagine a warmth begin to arise within the core of your body. It may help to close your eyes, this warm orb of light is deep within you, a flame always there and ready when you need it. This warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being, and it fills you with determination and courage. It floods your whole body until your skin is glowing with it, radiating outward. You feel strong. Know this. Jesus asks us to do hard things, to make changes, knowing we are capable, no matter what. We can change in order to heal this jewel planet called home. The calm of Christ in the storm is available for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you. And breathe out with the relief that you are forgiven.
The scripture this morning is from Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 to 27. Now when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? And he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? For the beauty of the
contemporary word for today comes from the youth activist and Times 2019 Person of the Year, Greta Thunberg. There is hope. I've seen it. But it does not come from the governments or corporations. It comes from the people. The people who have been unaware are now starting to wake up. And once we become aware, we change. We can change. And people are ready for change. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. After four weeks of healing stories in our Holy Vessel series, it may seem a bit strange to turn our attention now to this passage where Jesus calms a storm. Even recognizing that today our focus in worship has been on environmental health, it seems perhaps a bit of a stretch to consider Jesus calming a storm on the seas as being a rallying cry for green living or even an opportunity for us to prayerfully consider how we are able to make a difference in our impact on the environment around us. On the one hand, we see Jesus' complete authority over creation on display. Even the disciples are dumbfounded and exclaim in wonder that even the winds and the seas obey him. But the emphasis in this passage seems to be more on the disciples' lack of faith in Christ, not on any commandment from Christ that we should go and do likewise. Since this series is primarily focused on healing, I have to confess that I was left scratching my head this week as I looked for the healing opportunities in this text. It was then, thanks to a link from Marsha McPhee and her resources for this series, that I was reminded of Greta. While I'm sure it seems like over a decade ago at this point, thanks to the pandemic, you may recall the incredible attention in 2019 that was being poured onto this young 16-year-old Swedish girl who spoke truth to power in front of the leaders of the developed world. You may recall the tears that welled in her eyes as she addressed the 2019 UN Climate Summit and told them, I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. You may recall the heated passion with which she called out the inaction of the most powerful people in the world, crying, how dare you, in the face of what scientists agree is an impending mass extinction event and the urgency with which she demanded those leaders do something about battling climate change before it is too late for anyone to do anything about it instead of continuing to portray fairy tale like images of never ending wealth and prosperity i don't know if greta thunberg is a person of faith other than her faith in the scientific facts that point toward the necessity for us to make radical changes across the across the globe to reverse climate change and prevent the global temperatures from rising a mere 1.5 degrees Celsius as of 2019 that would put us past the point of no return. However, since she began her school strike for climate, her message has since been affirmed by the Vatican as a coherence of the church's teaching on our call to care for both humanity and for God's creation. And while her youth, her actions, and her bravery have drawn comparisons from some to Joan of Arc, I think we risk doing both her and ourselves a disservice if we elevate her onto that pedestal of sainthood. Her message and her call to action are prophetic, but they do not require us to perform miracles. Instead, the call to environmental health is as basic as trusting that by changing our ways, both in our individual practices and far more importantly, as a nation, we can also have the power to calm storms. 
Over the last several weeks, we have explored issues of both health and justice through this Holy Vessel series alongside our covenantal restoration study on Wednesday nights. We have listened to the promise of restoration and renewal, and we've taken a challenging look at our own assumptions and prejudices, both within and outside of the church, along with reflecting on steps that we can take together as Christ united to allow God to reshape us and mold us further into God's own image. Today, however, as we reflect on this concept of environmental health, we need to be reminded that it is our very climate itself that goes to shape so many of the other issues that we face and have been prayerfully considering how to address. We've seen already how climate change is impacting weather patterns, how our hurricane seasons have become longer and more devastating. How wildfires have increasingly grown more powerful and destructive, and how not only natural disasters, but drought and other climate issues have impacted the people in this country alone. Not just in the loss of homes and destruction of property, but also in the loss of livelihoods, of crops, of significant sections of our infrastructure, and more. Our current understanding of climate change has even suggested that it can affect and amplify the opportunities for viruses to evolve as humans come in increasing contact with other animal species due to such things as deforestation, poaching, forest fires, and more. Add into all of this mixture the fact that nearly all of these issues have a vastly disproportionate effect on marginalized communities, and we begin to get a better picture of how vitally important environmental justice is to the call, the larger call for justice in our world. As we seek to follow Christ as fully as we can, our passage today warns us that our discipleship comes at a cost. As Jesus responds to those in the crowd who wish to follow him in his ministry, he warns them that to follow him wherever he goes would involve not even having a place to call your own home. That it would require even letting go of such important cultural rituals as taking the time to bury one's deceased loved ones. It's easy to see this as Jesus being typically hyperbolic and dismissive of people whom he may have sensed were not quite as committed as they portrayed themselves to be. But it's also important to remember that following Jesus can and often does require us to make sacrifices for the sake of the gospel. And if not to make sacrifices, at the very least, to make changes that might make us uncomfortable. It might mean turning down a job at a company whose ethics are questionable, or missing out on lucrative investment opportunities because you know a company has unjust practices toward their workers or suppliers. For me personally, while it has been perhaps better described as more of an inconvenience than a sacrifice, it has meant participating for at least the last six or so years in a far longer, uh, uh, in a boycott that has gone far longer than those six years of the Wendy's fast food chain in solidarity with the coalition of Immokalee workers as they continue to urge the company to join the fair food program as nearly every other fast food chain in our country has done. Instead of adding to the exploitation of Mexican farm workers to supply their tomatoes. I am proud as well to see the work that Christ United is doing in our own backyard for justice on so many fronts from our willingness to challenge ourselves and learn together in various studies that we have undertaken to our own participation in larger denominational advocacy campaigns like the One Great Hour of Sharing. But we have also found opportunities, and I would encourage us to continue 
exploring opportunities as to how our church can be a stronger voice for environmental justice. Even in our choices for landscaping in our churchyard, upkeep in our building, and more, those opportunities present themselves to us. Whether it is something as small as planting bushes that will encourage butterflies and other pollinators to come and use our grounds for their survival, or whether it is exploring alternative means of energy and other opportunities, we, as Christ united, can make a difference. And still, we recognize also that such things as more renewable energy sources, greener vehicles, and other technologies that currently help to reduce our carbon footprint are often only available to those who have both the money and the resources to explore them in the first place. Today, I want to challenge us once again to consider how we might use our position in the community, how we might use our own voices and influence to work toward a more just future, not just for our neighbors, but for our planet. We have already seen our ability to use our voices as we participate yearly in the Bread for the World campaign of letters, we can use that same voice to contact those whom we have elected to represent us, to advocate for more access to green technologies, for better legislation that opens that pathway and invests in those opportunities. We can even adjust the types of plates and utensils and cups that we use during our friendship hour when that time comes once again to make sure they are from renewable resources. There are so many things that we can consider and that we can engage in that will make a difference. All we are asked to do is to let God guide our path, to trust God to give us the strength to step forward boldly, knowing the sacrifices that it may require of us, but also knowing that we can be part of a growing movement to calm the storms that are already forming before they grow out of control. May God continue to go with us in this journey toward justice. May God continue to reshape us. And may we have the wisdom to trust God in all things. To God be the glory. Amen.
this morning as we gather, we keep in mind the Joe Lakey family as they grieve the loss of Joe and all of those who are grieving, grieving losses that are due to COVID-19, grieving the year that we wish wasn't, grieving the loss of loved ones, whether it's from COVID or whether it's from other illnesses, other viruses. But we lift up all those who are grieving no matter how long it's been, for grief knows no bounds. We lift up those who are struggling with anxiety before surgeries that are coming. We lift up those who are struggling with depression, those who are struggling with mental illness of all forms, those who are struggling not only with staying home so that they don't get anyone else sick or themselves, but now those who are struggling as they start to feel more comfortable with getting back out around people now that they've had their vaccine and what it means to relearn how to socialize after a time of social isolation. We lift up especially those who are grieving the loss of life after the shooting in Atlanta. And we lift up especially all those of Asian American descent, for they are important and they are loved and their lives are valued to God and to all of us. And we lift up all these and so many more that have gone unsaid and yet God knows them and hears them and holds them in the palm of their hand. And so now, let us pray. Healer of our every ill, especially our fractured creation, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are working among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. You remind us that, that you are in the boat with us in the midst of difficult times. We give you thanks for this path of following you, even when you call us to cross over from one way of life to another. We pray especially for all who are impacted most by dwindling resources. We pray that we will continue to learn and see and know how our actions affect others, not just ourselves. We give thanks for the wake up calls that our young people are sounding around us. And we pray for the fortitude to move this journey forward alongside them. We give thanks for the courage of activists and educators who help us wake up to this storm and to see that we have it within our power to calm that storm, to re restore the earth's wholeness. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can join this effort now and into this future. And now, oh God, we come before you saying the prayer that you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The words of Jesus we highlight this week from the healing story are follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. This may seem like harsh words, and yet we hear Jesus' urgency even as he says them. 
Now is the time to move, no matter how difficult. We cannot wait. What is past is past. There is brokenness and there are casualties in its wake. But we can move forward. We can make changes. We can face storms because we are a people led by the healer, the calm in the storm who can offer us faith even in the midst of fear. And so this week for our symbolic ritual action, we are going to restore some beauty by adding to the beauty of one of our glass pieces In your Lenten packets, you received a piece of thin craft wire and were encouraged to save it until today. Now we invite you to wrap some of that wire around one of your pieces of beach glass, creating a pendant that could be hung in a window or as a necklace, a constant reminder of our role as those who must take care must care for and contribute to rather than diminish the beauty of this earth. Take some time now to do this simple wrapping and crafting with this craft wire and your glass. If you desire, take a photo of your finished product and share it as you can, either by social media, by email, whatever you are comfortable with. We can use these images in our worship next week. This week, the reaction of the crowd in the story is amazement at Jesus' connection to the cosmic forces of wind and wave. As scientists now try to teach us, all things are connected. Rather than dominion, we are to be attuned to all of creation that is around We see the cry of creation in awkward natural disasters, and we must heed the call not to hide in fear, but to work for healing. 
And so in our communal discerning about how this church here in Olmstead Falls, Berea, Ohio, can become a health hub through our ministry and mission, let us put our minds to imagining how we can learn about contributing to the beauty and healing of our environment. I invite you to explore with us the possibilities for a new and renewed commitment to a contribution we can make at Christ United Church to our larger community, to the larger efforts of recovery from this past year. As always, know that the gifts that you are giving, that the stewardship that you tithe of your money, of your time, of your talents, of your food, of your toilet paper, of all of them, are going to the reaches of the people here in Berea and Olmstead Falls. And so, if you feel so called to help us find a ministry that will help us with our environmental issues, with the issues of going green, with issues of using solar panels, make sure that you are telling us so that we can send our resources on those good things for our earth. For only we can help. Let us pray. God, we pray that you will use these blessings in whatever form they come, that they will be rolling down like the streams of justice, so that we might use them to pour back out into our community in new and invigorating ways to bless the people of this community and of the world that you have called us to challenge in environmental ways. We pray all these things in your heavenly name. Amen. And now go with confidence that we can face the storm with Jesus in the boat, recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring clearly in your ears. Follow me. And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen.